Uh, thank you very much. Uh, before I begin, I would like to thank uh, the council for having me and congratulate them on 30 years. Uh, it's a very important time right now in technology and maintaining competitiveness, particularly within our field, advanced materials, is absolutely crucial. Um, I've personally been looking forward to this talk for a number of months. Uh, earlier this year, I spoke at the International Economic Forum of the Americas in Toronto, talking about riding the wave of disruptive technologies. Uh, it was a little disconcerting to hear that the U.S.'s position ongoingly in terms of uh, competitiveness, uh, particularly within technology, was being questioned. And so one month ahead of the Consumer Electronics Show, I am so delighted to be able to engage with you all and talk about the work that we're doing and how uh, Acon Semiconductor and our partners are not only advancing the innovation technology, but also advancing our competitiveness through manufacturing of clean technology, opening up the possibility um, to a number of uh, very captive and key markets. So there we go. So I would like to frame my talk within the context of not only the innovative side of the technology, but how it's going to actually make uh, the US more competitive, and particularly amongst aerospace, military, consumer, telecom, and automotive markets. Now, the global semiconductor market is a huge market, $350 billion market worldwide. Uh, but specific to the United States, it's actually the third largest uh, contributing to GDP, right behind automotive, or sorry, aerospace and uh, pharmaceutical. Uh, but more importantly, it enables over a trillion dollar global market. And now within these markets, three key sub-markets are actually very limited. Power devices, things are overheating. Uh, the power efficiencies are about 90% inefficient in current uh, IC systems. Not good. Wearable systems, right? We have these new technologies, augmented reality, virtual reality. Very, very important, not only for fun, but also for military defense capability and sensing, in addition to other industries. It's a $40 billion market, projectedly, with a very uh, competitive uh, compo uh, compounded annual growth rate. Additionally, the military sensor and detector market um, is a very key market. And all of these three markets are actually quite limited uh, by the present uh, materials capability. So as the logo probably infers, or you can infer from it, we specialize in diamond-based semiconductors. Diamond has been known for quite some time to be a very efficient material, and perhaps the ultimate semiconductor material. Diamond can conduct heat five times more efficiently than copper, the current status quo material in thermal cooling. Um, but above and beyond that, it has the highest power handling, highest frequency capability, in addition to numerous other material attributes, which makes it very, very favorable for today's electronics. Particularly, as we're all seeing in the news, um, different types of cell phones, I won't mention specific names, not to hurt any customers' feelings, uh, that are being uh, either uh, incinerating on power up or being shipped damaged. So we know heat is still a major, major issue. And from Diamond, we can see not only superior performance, uh, increased energy efficiency, but thinner profiles, continuing this trend of thinner tech, more advanced tech, the next big thing. Uh, for me, I think the next big thing is really going to be fully transparent electronics. Because Diamond is a transparent diamond semiconductor material, or transparent semiconductor material, it can be married in with glasses, it can be married in with transparent metals, and you now, for the first time, have this ability to have fully transparent electronics. And so our earlier work in collaborating with national laboratories, uh, most notably Argonne National Laboratory, as well as other universities like the Stanford Nanofabrication Facility, has been focusing on the actual molecular engineering, actually going down to the atomic level uh, within materials like nanocrystalline diamond, and engineering them to have semiconductor properties, or engineering them to uh, alter the transparency or the mechanical properties. And so it's been a, a quite effective uh, demonstration in terms of showing the capability of diamond, because when we compare a device that we fabricated to the state of the art within uh, the silicon market, we see that not only is the device over a thousand times thinner, it's over a million times higher in terms of the current density. Extremely, extremely efficient material. This is perhaps five to seven years out in terms of the semiconductor cycling. It takes about 10 years to bring a chip to market. But that's not to say that there aren't innovations in the existing market, the so-called low-hanging fruit. And so from an R&D perspective, if we look at things like the optical and thermal needs, or the MEMS market, the microelectromechanical systems market, transparent electronics market, and semiconductor device, we can bring numerous innovative solutions 
uh, to much needed problems within aerospace, military, consumer, and telecom, and uh, in the automotive markets. For example, um, within the aerospace market, today we're uh, developing actual optical windows to make the existing countermeasure systems more efficient, more reliable systems which can better detect incoming ballistic signatures as well as have high reliability and efficiency so they can survive battlefield conditions, flight conditions, etc. cetera. Uh, but I think for us, nothing uh, speaks more closely to our individual lives than consumer electronics because we all have cell phones, we all enjoy using uh, our uh, automobiles which now connect and give us our messaging and won't leave us alone. Uh, but with an Akon Semiconductor, we've really been focusing on uh, building a diamond prairie. And this really has been a public-private partnership. And as much as I would love to take credit for that name, it actually came from an Illinois senator, uh, Senator Melinda Bush, who was uh, very instrumental along with the village of Gurney in actually having us relocate and headquarter in uh, Gurney, Illinois. And so we are globally headquartered there with our executive, our operations, engineering, and manufacturing support. So not only traditional semiconductor um, labor, but also engineering the new wave of folks to work on advanced materials manufacturing. Um, so it's an excellent spot in terms of addressing the next generation of competitive um, labor and manufacturing. This individual site is the world's first uh, CMOS compatible eight inch diamond semiconductor line. No other line is specifically readily insertable into today's semiconductor marketplace to be able to address and process other materials. And uh, as a part of that, in uh, signifying this public-private partnership, we actually were the recipient of a $6.4 million incentive package between the state of Illinois as well as the local uh, county and city. And so the technology in itself is very exciting, but you, know, you want to have a very stellar team behind the technology. And we were very proud to announce earlier this summer, we brought back key elements of Motorola's Razor team to help bolster this technology. Um, our chief operating officer, Carl Sherboff, is formerly director of engineering at Motorola, as well as formerly of uh, Argonne National Laboratory, chief technology officer as well, in addition to others um, down in the design level. But after announcing uh, bringing on this Motorola talent, we had to do something very exciting within cell phone, right? So we announced the third party test results of our diamond on glass technology. And so this brought to the question of the world, uh, you know, can diamond actually provide what we need in consumer electronics? Can we have scratch resistant display? Can we have a harder display? So every time we drop our phone, we don't have to replace it and shell out $129. Uh, and more outlets actually picked up this story. Um, so around 40 to 50 different outlets around the world actually reported on our third party testing results for our diamond on glass. And the speculation was going absolutely wild. When are we going to see uh, a diamond screen for cell phone? So I actually thought today for this audience, I would bring the world's first diamond glass screen and show you that not only is it here, it's already been productized. And when we do something like this, you know, we don't make this for one unit, we make this for 300 million units. So this technology is here today. And actually, the next question after this was, this is great, this is you know, something for a diamond screen or for a wearable screen, but what does this mean in terms of the readiness of the technology? So I thought you know, we would look at the comparative uh, material properties between diamond and the rest of the glass market. And what you can really see is that diamond's not only much harder, much higher strength resistance, it has much higher thermal conductivity, which means when your phone is to your face, it's gonna be running much more cool. And so from 800 times thinner profiles compared to the leading glass competitor, we see over six times harder material, uh, uh, sorry, six times stronger material and over 10 times harder material all at scale, which means that we can actually produce this on a per unit cost basis. But if you check the papers this morning, we actually upped the ante and we announced the world's first diamond glass lens. And this was very exciting because this is on commercial BK7 glass, excuse me. And so between these two products, we actually have the entirety of the addressable glass surface on your consumer electronics devices. So when we talk about the prospect of a diamond age, when we talk about is this material ready for market, we're not only seeing it being deployed in today's uh, military uh, technology systems and being integrated into these systems, we're actually seeing it in the broad, broad spectrum of consumer electronics. And that's very exciting because this was an idea that was not only originally, uh, originated in the labs within the United States, uh, developed here, uh, uh, initially researched to scale, but now brought to pilot production. And so I thought this was a very stellar way we could uh, state that innovative science started here, uh, will be developed here, and we have committed to actually bring this to mass scale. Okay. 
So thank you uh, for your attention. Uh, we are very, very proud to be doing this in the uh, Midwest, and uh, please track our efforts under the Diamond Prairie. Thank you.